Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my second and last Movie Monday with Views of the Day. And um, I'm just going to get right into it. In this one, I'll be covering the sequel to the first Neighbors, Neighbors 2, um, Sorority Rising. Um, I guess the first one made enough money where they felt like they could make a second one, even though um, nobody really liked the first one. They decided to go ahead with the second one anyways and talk to the audience and have them watch the second one, which you can make the argument was either worst or just as bad as the first one. So I pretty much just gave away what I thought about this movie, but I'll continue discussing it. Um, I'll quickly go over who directed and wrote the movie and stuff. I think it's pretty much the same um, people because it's the same film, essentially. Um, and it's a sequel, so it's the same people. The person who directed it was Nicholas Schwola. Uh, the person who produced the movie was Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, and James Weaver. It was written by Andrew J. Cohen, Brendan O'Brien. But it did have some new writers. We had Seth Rogen writing the movie, Evan Goldberg writing the movie, and Nicholas St Stoller also writing the movie. So they, all those three people, um, produced um, and directed, well, at least in Nicholas Stroller's case, the film. So Nicholas Stroller had pretty much had a two-man thing. He directed the film and wrote it, and Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen um, produced and wrote the movie. And the music was done by Michael Andrews, just like in the last one. Um, and Brandon Trost did the cinematography, which... I don't think he did it last time. I think it was somebody different. And it was edited by Zen Baker. The companies that produced this movie was Good Universe, Perfect World Pictures, and Point Play Pictures. And the um, this was distributed by Universal Pictures. Uh, this movie has two release dates. Um, it was released in Berlin on April 26, 2016, and it was released in the United States on May 20th, 2016. And this movie had a budget of $35 million. And now let's get to the actual uh, movie itself. I'm going to kind of break down my review the same way I broke down my last one, uh, but by talking about like the big stories and then kind of going through um, and kind of tying them all in, because quite frankly, if I try to go through it scene by scene, the review will be very sloppy, so I don't want it to be sloppy. So let's just kind of get right into it. So obviously, um, I think this takes place um, two. I was actually right. I was going to say two years, but I had to make sure two years after the first movie. So a lot has changed in two years, um, sort of. Um, but um, Mac and. Uh, Kelly's lives really haven't changed all that much. Um, I told you that, like I said in the last movie, they really didn't go through this big character change, and that definitely showed in this movie. They were pretty much the exact and the exact same characters and had no change from the last movie. Um, and um, yeah, uh, it opens up with the same scene with Mac and uh, Kelly having sex. Well trying to have sex, and uh, Kelly gets sick because we find out that she's pregnant. And then I think, like, four months go by because she's four months pregnant, and um, we find out that they're selling their house, uh, mainly because the house is so small they can't um, have two babies in the house. And by this point... Um, Stella is two years old, um, so they will, um, there you go, I don't know why, um, seems kind of soon to, uh, have another kid at two years old, but, um, you know, when, when your kid is two years old, because a lot of people talk about those trouble in twos, so, yeah, I didn't like the opening scene, though, I just thought it was pretty much, um, I actually thought I was watching the same movie by accident, but then um, I wasn't. 
So I want to give it. A, um, I'm going to give that a down. I didn't like the post scene. It was just trying to recycle um, old. Um, it was just trying to recycle a scene that you had already done before. Um, so pretty much, um, they're selling their house. They've already bought the house that they're going to move into. But um, they're selling their house. Usually, though, you would sell um, the house you currently live at um, a little bit before um, you're gonna move. Uh, you're gonna move out of this one, but I guess it is what it is. Um, so um, the we the um, the real later. Who has name I don't remember because I'm just fantastic at remembering names. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can find um, find her because I forget. I should really start to write these names down sometimes because uh, um. Yeah, because, um, okay, so Wendy, um, yeah, so, and she was in the last film very briefly because she had more of a role in this film, since when you sell your house, you probably see more of the real tour than you would, um, originally, so, um, the people pretty much, um, are gonna buy the house, but, um, we find out that, um, they're going through an escrow for 30 days. Pretty much what this is, is, uh, they can expect a house and, um, if they find that there's anything wrong with it, they can back out of their purchase. Now, obviously, um, Mac and, uh, um, Mac and Kelly had no idea that you could even do this originally because they were asked about this before, but. They didn't know what it was. It was supposed to be funny. Um, and when the uh, the new people, the new family came in, um, they uh, found uh, their daughter playing with a, uh, with a dodo, which wasn't really all that uh, funny. It was kind of... See, the thing is, is the stuff that maybe would be funny, I just didn't really think was written as if it was supposed to be funny because... Um, the dialogue of set then was really bad. So that gets it down. I just didn't really care for that. So pretty much nothing can go on. They're not really worried about it at first because um, because uh, they don't have to deal with any frat parties or anything like that. But then that changes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the change that happens. So we meet this uh, um, woman. Her name um, was Shelby, and she had joined a sorority, um, and the leader of the sororities was going through all the rules about it, how they can't smoke pot, they uh, don't attend, they don't run the, any parties of their own, they go to frat parties, and obviously Shelby doesn't like any of these rules, and the leader of the uh, sorority was played by uh, Selena Gomez, which was pretty cool. I was surprised she didn't have a bigger role in this movie. It just kind of felt like um, that because Selena Gomez was in this movie, I, I would imagine that when the trailer came out, they used her and made it look like she was going to be in this movie, but it, it ended up uh, being like this big teaser. She really wasn't in it, but whatever. Um, I don't actually remember who... Uh, yeah, it doesn't say her name. It just says President of... Um, Fia Lambda, Lambda, which is Lambda, Lambda, B Lambda, which is the name of the sorority. And when uh, Shelby goes to the uh, one of the frat parties, she does she think she doesn't like it because she thinks it's a uh, very uh, sexist towards women. It's just not the type of party that she wants. All everybody wants to do is have sex with women. And just and it's noisy and she doesn't like it, so she meets this uh the this um these women 
um, Beth and Nova, and they go have um, a good time at their own, at their dorm, and we find out that they didn't really have a lot of friends um, in high school, and we're always told kind of how to do things. We find out that Shelby's father was really strict, um, so she really wasn't able to have a good high school experience. Um, and um, then when the the uh, dorm attendant, um, the resident assistant, I should have said, Kyle Mooney, so, uh, well, that's who we played him, comes in um, and tells him pretty much um, not to uh, do any drugs. They decide to start their own sorority. Um, and I coincidentally enough, I think you knew where this was going to end up going because of the title. Um, they buy the same house that, um, I don't remember his name, that Teddy, um, and the, uh, D um, Delta PSI Beta, um, had bought to use the, for their sorority, which, you know, um, you could call, totally see coming a mile away because that's how the story really had to get into motion. What happens though is the way they were able to get this house is we didn't I didn't talk about this yet. We did get to see Teddy, Pete, um, um Golf, um, and Danny. Well, I'll talk about Danny some more. They just end up having like a guys' night out. They have a guys' night where uh, the fraternity gets together every Monday, just like at these mon movie Monday with you series every week, and they're kind of talking about what their lives are like. Um, after a couple, um, being done with college, we find out that um, Golf um, is a cop. Um, we don't actually find out what happens with uh, we don't actually find out what happens with Pete though. They didn't really go into much detail about that, but we find out that uh, everyone's pretty much successful and. Um, Teddy pretty much is still has the same job as modeling, and he really hasn't moved on from college. Um, which I kind of like that they kind of show that because um, I think a lot of people think that just because you go to college and um, you 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 get the major and you think you're going to be very successful, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're destined for success. You could end up. Some people just get get stuck living in the college days. Um, so I like that. We find out that Teddy and Pete are uh, roommates. They pretty much share the room. But then we find out something very interesting about Danny. Now, obviously, you could tell from when he talks, we find out that he's um, gay. But we also find out that Pete and Danny um, are partners. So Pete pretty much had his coming out party since this movie, since the last movie. Um, and yeah, pretty much. Uh, Danny proposes to him, and um, because of this, um, Pete asks um, Teddy to move out because he needs Danny to move in so that way, uh, and they're going to turn his room into an office so that way um, they can have, um, he can work from home and stuff like that. And he pretty much, um, he would just kind of get in the way. So obviously, um, Teddy gets upset about this. And he and this kind of explains how he ends up getting involved with, um, the sorority, um, with Shelby, Beth, and Nora. He helps, um, kind of, um, not only run it, but he kind of helps them, um, and helping them get this thing started. He kind of helps, um, he kind of helps them, uh, teaching them how to run the sorority, and he also kind of um, helps, um them and gives them ideas of what they should do in the sorority he also um you know helps them uh um give them ways to fund the sorority because pretty much what's going to happen is they're going to have a party and people they can they're going to combine they all have like a thousand dollars to put in the house so they bought so they um just drop a thousand dollars on the house and they're going to have these buckets of um money that will have um, five of them, and it'll all make up the, the um, amount of money that it would take to um, 
by be able to uh pay for the rent and stuff like that. So yeah, um that was interesting. And they do this scene with uh Teddy um yeah, they do this scene with Teddy, Kelly, Mac and uh forget the baby's name because I'm just epic at remembering names. Oh crap! I forget the baby. I forget uh Stella. Stella, that's the name. Um, so yeah, pretty much what happens is they have like a little face to face. It's the first time they've seen each other um for a while, and um um Teddy kind of drops this thing saying that I'll see you around. So this was kind of planting the seeds of what was to come. So then when uh. Mac and uh, Jesse come home. They see that there's this party going on um, next door. We also find out that they made this. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, that Beth, Nora, and uh, um, Shelby made this ad and finally named um, the sorority. It's called Kappa Nu, which is a weird name, but they decide they didn't really explain why that's the name. They just kind of threw that out there. Would have been nice to know why they made this. Uh, name of the sorority, but they just kind of went with that name, and they realize that they're going to be really noisy, and um, the couple that wants to buy this house isn't going to want, whose names, I actually have their names, oh, uh, um, all, um, all of us, Stu Becker, Stu Baker, Jessica Bayers, and Eric Bayers, um, actually, no, sorry, just Jessica Bayers and Eric um, Bayers, um, and they realize they won't want to buy this house if there's a bunch of sororities partying next door, so they try to get, ask him to be quiet, uh, just for 30 days, it's probably been past a, cu um, a couple of days, so it would really be 28, but then they say, well, our whole motive is that we party, and sororities can't have parties, which, um, they so can't have parties, so he goes through the whole pro process, and, um, then, uh, Mac and, uh, Jesse realize that, uh, they're screwed, and then this is when they see Teddy again, and this is what I meant by, um, see you later. So, and, but they didn't really know what he was talking about, so it kind of, um, ruined the, um, intensity that it would have had. So then what happens is they try, they pretty much go through the same motion, um, we also find out that uh, Max friend Jimmy and his wife, whose name I can't remember, because uh, Paula um, are having a baby as well. As Jimmy is really worried about uh, becoming a dad, he's worried that he won't be good at it. And they tried, to, and they did like this comedic stuff uh, where they talked about like stuff that he wouldn't know about a dad. And Max not really worried about it, and they kind of. Uh, go through this whole thing where he's happy he's having a son because he doesn't have, have to deal with a teenage years of woman. Um, and they kind of uh, got into an altercation about that. Not not much of an altercation, but sort of. And then uh, uh, the first thing they try is, so I, I, well, actually I jumped ahead. So what they try to do at first is uh, they, uh, Get start to get worried that uh, Stella's not gonna really want to be around her parents anymore because she's gonna want to go off and um, do other things and still start to be the way that sh um, Shelby and all the other sorority girls are. So what they decide to do is they get the father involved. Um, so they bring in Shelby's father, who's the um, the actor I think I've seen before. I'm not exactly sure, and. Well, at first, actually, what they try to do is they go to uh, the uh, the dean of uh, trying to find the uh, um, uh, um, the dean the uh, the universe to, to the dean who was Dean Carol Gladstone who was in the last movie and uh, 
try to get a way to get this shut down, but pretty much because this sorority was created outside the university, there's really nothing they can't do. The whole stuff they tried last in the last movie didn't work. Pretty much, I think they wanted to have this scene in there, so that way uh, fans wouldn't question. I mean, this probably is true, but fans wouldn't question, well, why not just try to do the same things, the same thing you did before? This was just to kind of explain that. Um, so what happens is they try to get the father involved, because Shelby's father is very strict, but he doesn't listen to her, and it was a really bad scene, actually. So it was really bad. Um, they get, get into a fight with each other, and he gets upset, and then he realizes his little girl's growing up, and that's that. So it didn't work. So then this starts the war. Shelby says that it's on now, so um, it leads to, um, yeah, it leads to a ton of... Uh, Bad scenes where, uh, um, where Mac leaves his house and they rip his clothes off and stuff. Um, it was just really weird. And they pretty much just kind of make their lives a living hell, kind of like in the last movie. And then they kind of start to show the cracks with, um, Teddy and the sorority girls, where, um, they throw um already even used tampons at the uh windows of Mac and Jess um not Jesse, sorry. I don't know why I said Jesse. Um Mac and Kelly and um then um you know, um Teddy thought it was too far, but um then um and they go through this like sin where they are constantly at odds with each other because Teddy um is kind of in is a stereotype towards sororities, and if guys did it, it would be hilarious, so that was kind of that, um, yeah, it was just really weird, so then what happens is Teddy and Pete get into an altercation, and, uh, it was kind of the same stuff as, uh, the last movie, except this time it was more of an adult base, where Teddy's trying to live um, the high college days, and he talks about how he's mentoring these sorority girls, and everyone just thinks it's weird, um, and, um, then, um, he doesn't, thinks it's just weird, and thinks that Teddy needs to grow up, he needs to start getting his life together, um, so, obviously, uh, Teddy and, uh, Pete get into a fight and claim they're not brothers anymore, and that was pretty much it, you don't really see Pete until, like, the end of the movie, I did kind of like the, uh, I will say, I did kind of like the story they went through with, uh, Teddy, where, like, uh, he's this failure college, um, coming out of college student, um, and, uh, the whole movie is him trying to become a success, so I did kind of like that part of the movie, that we're getting up. Um, the starting of the sorority I didn't like, that gets it down, and, Kind of like that scene with Shelby and uh, her father gets it down. That wasn't good at all. So, um, pretty much what happens is uh, Mac and uh, the uh, couple that's going to buy the house, um, Mac and uh, um, Kelly realize they have to get rid of them just for that day. Um, so what they do is uh, out to eat. Um, Jim and Paula had bed bugs, which is not good for a pregnant woman probably to have bed bugs. Um, and, um, they, what they do is they throw all their clothes, Jim and Matt, Paula's clothes, into the, um, sorority house, so that way, uh, the, it would have to get tented. Um, and that's exactly what happens, and they make it look like that sorority girls don't actually live there. That it's actually just some Jewish family that is very quiet that Jim and uh, Paula are disguised as. And they explained the tent being over the house um, by uh, by uh, saying that it's just being fumigated for the process to be done. So that was interesting. And everything looks to be all right. And then because the sorority girls had to throw all the money into getting the house tented, they can't really. They can't afford next month's rent, 
So, um, they come up with an idea. Somehow it led to this. They came up with this convoluted plan that one of the sorority girls' cousins um, sells 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 marijuana. So what they do is they're gonna buy the, his marijuana um, and um, sell it at uh, a tailgate party, and they. Obviously, they realized that a lot of people that sell marijuana would be there. So what they decided to do is to uh, turn them into the cops to take out the competition. And Teddy thinks this is stupid. I thought this was stupid, so I'm going to give this a down. And he tries to give his um, intellect and what they he thinks they should do. And um, they no one really listens to them. They send they have like this big group text and they send a text message saying that uh, they're going to kick him out, and they kick him out of the uh, sorority girls. And obviously, um, you could kind of see this coming with the way the movie was being worked. You knew kind of that he was going to get kicked out, or they were going to kick him to the curb. So then he ends up joining forces with uh, Mac and um, Kelly, and he tells them about this plan. Well, first what happens is uh, it shows the scene where Shelby actually calls the cops, and Gives the addresses of those people. And they do some funny, not funny um, lines with uh, um, golf and um, um, Officer Wakens, who doesn't have a very big role at all in this movie, where they go arrest him. And he's being really weird about it. So, yeah, then Teddy goes and informs them of this plan. So they come up with a plan to steal the marijuana um, and the money so that way they can't sell it. And um, then, um, yeah, they steal it. And then uh, Teddy uses himself as a distraction because he's supposedly good-looking, so women will easily be distracted by him. So the sorority girls, so he goes and poses on the stage and the sorority girls get distracted by this. What didn't make any sense about this is you would think, um, logically, um, maybe because uh, we're supposed to have assumed that um, when, when you think somebody's good looking and you see them posing, logic goes out the window. But logically, you would have thought they would have had enough brains to realize, because Shelby's not stupid by any stretch of the imagination, and neither was Beth, neither was Nora, neither were the other, any of these other girls. You would have thought that they would have... Um, figured out that uh this was some sort of trap um but i guess not so that was a down i didn't like this at all and then they do this weird scene where uh mac grabs the uh the marijuana he runs away with it and eventually what it and they do this dumb scene where jim's dressed as a clown and they beat the crap out of him it was really weird and um then, um, eventually, and then, um, Shelby gets the weed back, but then it, um, it's like because it's in a trash bag, of course, they had to have a scene where it falls into a ton of, uh, um, trash bags, and they don't know which one is which, and Mac's able to, because he's a marijuana expert, he's able to, um, kind of, like, um, find it somehow by uh, x-ray vision or something. I don't know. It was bad. This whole scene was a down. So he grabs it and burns it. And then I believe the rest of the movie was focused around, um, around them being bad parents because uh, um, Shelby, I think her name is. I'm going to keep forgetting because... I just, yeah, not Shelby, I'm sorry. Stella, about being bad parents to Stella, because Stella's um, playing with dildos. She's, um, you know, a swearing in front of her, and they say that's not really to swear in front of her, kind of stuff like that, that really would be bad parenting. So it's just really stupid. And then eventually, um, when they finally won, 
I forget. I don't remember the next scene. They kind of go back to um, the Teddy thing where they talk. Where Teddy, the deal that Teddy gets um, out of Wilkin with them is that they'll look at him as some sort of value. So they kind of give Teddy like this life lesson, talking about how he should uh, look um, and say what he is valuable at and what he wants in life. And they offer to give him a place to stay because he doesn't have um, a place to stay. And it looks like they're actually starting to bond. And then. The sorority girls come up with a plan when um, Mac and uh, Kelly, who they call the old people, and they even call Teddy an old person, even though he's only probably a few years older than them, but whatever. Um, they, uh, yeah, they pretty much uh, want to sabotage um, them because they talk, because pretty much. Um, they did this thing where Teddy talked about how he doesn't think the sorority girls are really a sisterhood. There's no I in sorority. And then they do like this lame thing where they actually try to spell it out and it was just really lame. But so Shelby tries to split up um, Mac and uh, Kelly. So what they do is they steal their phones and Beth and uh, Shelby change their phone numbers to their numbers. and. Uh, would tend to be them texting them, and they both text and they both text the same thing. Pretty much that they're, um, pretty much uh, that they're going, that they're leaving, going to figure things out, and not to call them. And then, um, and of course they buy it. Um, you would, I mean, you would think, uh, because of how big they were being, you would have thought this was a trap, but I guess not. So, um, Kelly gets upset about this and goes to gym at work and asks where, uh, Mac is, and, um, he won't, he doesn't even know where he is, and she thinks she's li he's lying to her because of bro code, and, um, Paula then says to say something, um, Bill, Mac's boss, comes up and says to say something, and, um, Jesse, I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Jesse. Kelly hits him off the head with a, uh, with a computer keyboard, and um, wants him to say something. And then he finally, fa she finally FaceTimes him off uh, his phone, and we find out that he goes to Australia. Um, that's when I would have known something was up. Is that if you're having me go all the way to Australia? But I guess you let it play out that long. So when they come back. We find out that uh, the sorority girls um, robbed everything, literally everything, out of the house. So they're gonna pretty much go bankrupt. And then the couple wants to pull out of the, that wants to buy the house, wants to pull out of their deal because they have a ton of sorority girls living next door. And they say if you get rid of them by tomorrow, um, we'll consider not pulling out of buying the house. So then. Uh, Teddy, Paula, Jim, Mac, and um, Kelly all have this plan where they're going to, uh, well, actually, at first, then we find out that uh, the sorority girls are got about to get evicted, so they pretty much realize that the only way they're going to waste money is they have to sell out. They have to um, have a fraternity party. So... That's what happens. They make this commercial about it, and then we find out that, uh, yeah, then, so they want to get stuck. So Mac and everybody I just said earlier wants to stop this party. Um, so what happens is, uh, they try to, um, T Teddy, Jim, and, uh, Paula infiltrate the house, and Paula's about to go in their labor. Um, but obviously, because Jim and stuff, and both of them are bad parents, and the joke is that they are bad parents. Um, Jim's kind of like, what she wants to do with her body is what she wants to do. And um, Norma and uh, Beth and all the other sorority girls aren't feeling this party because it's going against everything they believed in. Um, and we found out uh, Noi drank punch, but we found out it was actually... A Woofie and Jim drank the same thing, and when Noah finds out that Jim was sent in there to stop the party, 
they're getting into like this weird fight, but because they've been woofied, it's really awkward. And then um <sighs> Shelby realizes that uh Mac and uh Kelly are gonna and everybody else is gonna try to stop the party. So Teddy tried to go up to his old room and shut the party down, but they're using solar powered po um Pody, so the 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 so it the electricity doesn't pretty much apply here, and Shelby goes in and cuts the phone cord, which she didn't realize it was on a phone cord because she's young, they're old. That was a bad joke. Um, and then steals their cell phones, and Mac and Teddy chase after her, and they follow into the garage, and they hear her talking, but we find out it was just a recording, and they she locks. Um, him in the garage, and they have no way to get out. They try to throw everything they can at it, weights, ride a bike into it, but it doesn't work. So then they pretty much recreate the scene where they use the airbags, and what happens is, uh, at first, uh, Mac and Teddy, um, you know, um, um, have like this bro moment where they're finally starting to become close with them brothers and Teddy tries to get out but he hits his head on the wall and then Mac gets out and he ends up breaking down the whole garage door. Um and then uh yeah they try to shut the when they get out they're gonna go shut the party down but then because everybody really isn't feeling this party they just wanna quit the sorority. They say this isn't what we were made this for and all the women are really upset. Shelby's upset because now it's just going to be like in high school and stuff like that. And um, Mac and everybody else feel bad about this, except for Jim because he's been roofied. Um, so Kelly gives them advice, saying that it doesn't matter. Um, the house shouldn't matter what make you what what the house that doesn't make a sorority. You guys make the sorority. So they decide to have the to go back to the quota of why they started a sorority. Um, and then we find out that uh, Paula actually was going into labor because when we see, she sees that there's a foot sticking out, like a, a baby ready to give birth, which was pretty gruesome. And everybody has like a good time. And then um, that baby's probably going to be messed up because uh, she didn't go into labor sooner. Um because she was supposed to go in the labor the next day. And then um, we think everything's going to go to absolute shit. But then uh, the sorority girls, we think, are going to lose their health. But then Selena Gomez from the first sorority, the leader, everybody pretty much wants to join their sorority. So they need to have two houses. They offer to buy, uh, to rent out uh, Mac and uh, Kelly's house for five buckets of money and it's like big buckets like paint buckets and they move out when they move into the new house they're happy to start their new lives um but funny thing i would have found and maybe it would have been predictable but then they found then to find out that they actually had noisy neighbors but then that would have meant we were probably going to get another neighbors and we don't need another neighbors it's don't need that so then um teddy makes up with uh pete and Pete asks him to be, he goes in like, he goes to his house like at the middle of the night. That's where the joke sort of come in saying, why would you not call me? It's the middle of the night. So Pete asks him to be his best man. So then four, uh, four months later, um, so then maybe uh, thinking about it, maybe Kelly was five months pregnant then because usually you're typically pregnant for nine months and you wouldn't be pregnant, at, you wouldn't give birth at eight months, so. Um, but, uh, then, um, yeah, um, Pete and, uh, T Teddy's giving Pete the peep talk, like the best man's normally supposed to at a wedding, and then we found out he found a new job. He, uh, organizes gay weddings, and, uh, yeah, so that was kind of nice. I guess that made sense. You knew he was going to be some sort of organizer, because we found out he's, like, really good at mass and planning parties. He's a gay wedding planner so that's i guess makes sense i like that part of the movie up um and then um um 
Mac and uh, Kelly come home with their new baby. We find out that Jim's named his baby Jim Jr. And that's supposed to be like a funny moment. They have this big ending. And I just don't really have anything left to say. The movie just ends. I don't really remember. Like it just ends. I don't really remember how it fully ends. So I don't really, and I don't really care to talk about it. Um, and that was pretty much the end of the movie. This movie made um a hundred eight million dollars. It went down from um the first one. Maybe the, I wonder if if some of these people thought the first one was so bad they didn't want to go see the second one. I don't know what it was, but yeah, they wanted to um this movie um for box office buys made a hundred eight million dollars. That's crazy. Um so yeah, pretty much uh that's the movie. This movie is just probably as bad, if not worse, than the first one. I don't really know which one I prefer because they're both bad, but in different ways because the stories are a little bit different. But this is pretty much kind of the same movie. Um, at least this one's shorter, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, but this movie, I would say maybe the first one might be slightly better because it has, because at least it was an original. We hadn't seen it before when they did the. Uh, airbag scene it was a little bit funnier then because it hadn't been done before and i just thought you know maybe because seth rogan wrote this it's kind of an example where you can you should just be an actor not a writer ironically enough though and a lot of people fans on i um agree with me they don't think this movie is very good either but some odd reason this movie gets an approval rated from the critics um it's just wicked weird i don't think this movie is good at all i think it's um a train wreck but yes, they uh, it did win some awards, um, and some of them are nominated, like Zac Efron. Who, well, let me go through uh, the cast for this movie. Uh, Seth Rogen returns as Mac Radner. Uh, Zac Efron returns as Teddy Sanders. Um, Rose Bryant returns as Kelly Radner. Chloe Grace Mortez um, plays Shelby. Ike. Um, Baron Holtz returns to play Jimmy Belvins. Um, Carla Gallo returns to play Paula Lads Belvins. Percy Clemens return, um, plays Beth. Beanie Bledstein returns to play Nora. Dave Franco actually doesn't return. This was the first one. Dave Franco returns to play um, Peach Regazzoli. Christopher Mines, um, plays he returns to play Scooney. I don't even remember who he is. Jared Carmichael returns to play Garfield or Golf for short. Lisa, um, Curdwell, return, Curd, I don't know how you say it, the last name, returns to play, play Dean Carol Gladstone. She didn't have a very big role at all. Obviously, like I said, she was in the last one and she was also in Friends as Phoebe. Um, Selena Gomez plays the president of that uh, university, I said earlier. Hannibal Boaz returns to play Officer Wakens, which I think he should have had a bigger role in this movie because he was funnier in the last one. John Early plays Darren. Kelsey Gramer plays Shelby's father. Brian Hutsky returns to play Bill. I'm just going to say Max Boss. I'm not even going to try. Razzo. Hosky, I think that's how you say it. Clara Mamet plays uh, Miranda, who was a member of Kappa Nu. Um, I don't really remember her at all. Um, Aqua Fana plays Christine, who is a member of Kappa Nu. Um, Ellis and Zoe Vargas return to play Stella Radner. Liz Kakowski plays Wendy the w realtor. Um, Billy Ekna plays Oliver Studebaker, who was the real estate agent for Capanu. He was the one that bought them the house. He wasn't that good at all in this movie. Thank God he was only in one scene. Abby... Um, Jacobson plays Jessica 
Bayos, who was one of the couple that tried to buy the house, and then Sam Richardson um, plays Erica Bayos, and then Kyle Mooney plays the res resident assistant of the college dorm. Um, and then Johnny Pemberton is plays one of the frat boys. And that's pretty much, uh, yeah, in this movie, yeah, so some people, uh, Zach F1 won won an, um, was nominated for, um, the Teen Choice Awards. He was the choice movie Hissy Fit, and Chloe Grace won the choice movie actress comedy, and Zach F1 won the choice movie actress comedy, actor comedy, I'm sorry. And then Zach F1 was nominated for, in the People's Choice Awards, for Favorite Comedian Actor, Favorite Comedian Movie Actor for this for his role here. Um, and then Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, was nominated for Favorite Comedic Movie. And then Trashiest Poster was, Trashiest Poster was t the teaser. That was nominated. It was also nominated for Best Comedy Trailer to New Rules Green, Green Band. So I don't understand this at all. Maybe... I just enjoy the movies I enjoy, and people who enjoy the movies they'll enjoy, but I'm just surprised that it was even nominated for anything, but whatever, I just don't think this movie's good at all, it's bad. If I had to rate this movie in a letter grade, I would also give it an F, but if I had to say which one's better, I would say, if you're gonna watch one of them, just watch the first one, it's not, it's bad, but it's not as bad as this one, this one I think is much worse, but you really can't do worse than an F, so, yeah. That's pretty much the end of uh, this video. Um, so please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video um, for more content. And for, well, so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell. So that way, every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. Make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers YouTube channel. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll be back next week to do another Movie Monday with you series.